I am finishing up my Battle of the Brows project. If you want to hear my thoughts, then stick around. Let's get this out of the way. If you like the content on this channel, please consider subscribing. And if you like the content of this video, give it a thumbs up. That would be awesome. I cannot believe I have 30 brow products next to me, right there. I have used so many different brow products over the last month or so, my head is spinning. But I think it was a really great thing to do. I have brow products for the next two years because <laughs> I'm going to use all of them. But I wanted to go across not only brands, but also across types of brow products to decide for myself which ones I like the most and the least, and then also offer that information to you. I don't think it's very many of us who go through 30 different products. So I want to go over the products in a given brand as well as the products across brand by product type, if that makes sense. And I'd like to go over powders first because I have the least of those. And I think that they are the most versatile in a way because if you are familiar with using powder in your brows, then you are able to use just about any shadow that or powder product that matches your brows with a little bit of wax or any sort of setting medium to be able to have a brow that stays in place all day and that looks nice. So let's take a look at the powder products that I have. One of them is the powder products in this Shape Matters palette. And this is the full face and eye Shape Matters palette from Smashbox. You'll see a light, a dark color, and then the wax medium as well. That's uh, protected by a little door here. I used this one and I also used this little Quo palette that you may have seen me use in past videos if you have been watching this channel for a while. And this is what it looks like inside and it comes with a little brush. So there's the wax, there are two shades here as was the case in the Shape Matters palette and then the brow highlight as well, all in one little uh, package. And I have mentioned in previous videos that when I'm done with this, I'm probably going to refill it with uh, other powders because I just like how compact and easy this little package is. That said, as I mentioned, if you have brow wax and then you have powder, you can pretty much do your brows with any powder that matches your eyebrow color or whatever color you want to use that day. So case in point, I have a little Universal Brow Freeze here from Sephora. It is on sale right now at Sephora. It has been for a long time. This is what it looks like. So it's a clear wax and it is very much like I just cleaned it off with my hands here and it's a very waxy finish, kind of tacky, but it does hold the brows in place. If you have a lot of brows and you just want them to behave, you might even use this product on its own. But this with any sort of powder, you can, uh, use this to begin with and then use the powder after. I think that works really well. Or you can use your brush and get some of the wax and then dip into the powder. However you want to use it, I didn't find any which way that it, that it didn't work. So I'm a big fan of this product and for $6 Canadian is like is is a fantastic, fantastic price. I did check last week and it was still available. I don't expect it to be out, but uh, it works great. And if you can't get the clear you can go for the light medium or dark and it's not that uh, deep of a color to be able to use it again as a base to go with with powder products but this would definitely be my, my my preference if you're going to use it with powder one last brow powder product is the sephora brow thickener and i have it in 03 brunette and it is a product that is powder based but it comes with its own applicator. So this is what the applicator looks like. As I touch the lens. <laughs> Here's what the applicator looks like. And it is powder. It's, 
it's actual powder that comes out um, onto your your face or onto your brow one word of caution on this is that it is very powerful as a it draws a line very quickly and so you may want to use a brush like on the applicator to get more precision on your brow I only use this product once and I already have a decent amount of brow, brows and it was just like BAM color and I didn't realize how powerful this would be but definitely I am not mad at this product as long as you have the proper color match I think it's a, a decent option for for brows and I like I kind of like the fact that it is a, a powder it was fine again it's more of a color match issue so those are the three powder products that I played with this past month I think that based on the fact that I showed you that brow thickener from Sephora, which I would consider an unusual item, I'll show you these as well. I included these in this project because it's a Rita Hazen Root Touch-Up Pen. It looks like this when it's pretty new. And I understood that not only can it be a, a Root Touch-Up, but it can also be a brow product and it's it's encouraged to use it that way i used this darker color once and found that it was too dark for me and i ended up ordering this one instead and found that it was a much better match for me so here's the other one right here it's just a better match the darker one is called dark brown slash black, and then this one is called light brown, and I can now kind of mix the two. But basically, I like the fact that once you can't really use it for root touch-up, you can dig in with, again, with a brush and get more of the product and use it for brows. And so that is what I'm going to do with this one. So having used it only once, I probably the dark brown slash black I'm probably going to reserve for the second half of my brow and I would use the lighter one on the inner uh, half unless I use a different product in combination with the Rita Hazen. It worked really well, it stayed put, I mean it does that for my roots so when I need to do touch-ups between colorings I like this product a lot and the fact that I can multitask it into more than one use on my face I, I'm quite happy with it. If you have seen my Joe Fresh video, I will put it right here. You would have already heard about these products. This uh, slim one is called the Universal Brow Sculpting Wax. And it has, and like the Sephora one, it has a tint. So it's not clear, but it is a very mild tint. It is, a, it is really supposed to be a wax to keep the brow in place. And I really like the angled aspect of this um, this brow wax. I do think it is a little expensive though. You can find the Sephora wax, even the, the colored waxes for cheaper and those will be coming up. And now there is this Universal Brow Crayon and you can tell I like it because the writing is almost off on the container. So this is a chubby pencil and it is, if you have you don't have to basically create your brows from nothing. You already have a good amount of brows. This is like 30 seconds. It is so, so quick to just draw your brow on and just be out the door. And it is, I mean, I can't say for sure that it's universal, but it was definitely a color that when I put it on, I thought, oh, well, I think it would go for blondes to deep brown. I just don't think that it would work really well for anyone who has ebony colored brows. I think that that would show up too light. But I would say not universal, but maybe nearly universal. Out of the two, this is my winner and it is definite winner. I even got a second one of these because I was able to get it for super ridiculous discount for like two bucks each. I think they're eight or ten dollars Canadian for these. But if you're like a 30 second brow person, these are both great, although this one gives you more color. This one really just gives you, for the most part, hold. All right, let's compare a couple of products here that are kind of similar. One of them is from Benefit. It is the Gimme Brow. Now, I have a little sample, but it was plenty for me to get a good feel for it. It's called the Brow Voluminizing Fiber Gel. And then I'm going to bring in this one, which is the Sephora 
Brow Builder, and this one is waterproof, and I don't see waterproof on the Benefit one, although I, I quite like the Benefit product. So let's just take a look. This one is in, in three, in the shade three, and I usually use three or 3.5. It's almost like uh, it's almost like a thick brow mascara is the way I would kind of portray these these products. This one is a lot more in your face as far as the amount of product that comes out. You probably want to when you're using if you are using the Sephora one is just to wipe off the excess product before you go and apply it in the brow. I was a little bit surprised by this one when I first went to apply it, although it was a very good color match. This one is for my brow anyway. It is the 05 natural gray brown. Kind of an ashy brown works quite well for my brows and so this is what uh, this one is, so neutral gray brown. And I found that they worked, I don't know if I can even do a swatch really with these, but I'll try. Oh, you can see the color right here on the Sephora one. A lot less comes off on the Benefit um, product, but you'll see that they're very similar color. So this is the Benefit product, this is the Sephora, very similar color, and it's basically short, short bristles, kind of like a mascara for your brows. I said that before, but I mean, that's really what it is. I do like them. I would say that the Sephora option is the, the cheaper option. When it comes to brow products, Benefit really kind of hits it out of the park. So I would not hesitate to recommend Gim Gimme Brow. I think that I would suggest that Gimme Brow is more of a natural look eyebrows if you want to use it on its own or it's a complement to the Precisely My Brow Pencil which we'll get to. I would say that for most people this may not be a standalone product unless you really really like natural brows. This one however is a standalone product and I think that if anything the learning curve is how to not use too much of it every time you use it. So I was like I said surprised at how much product came out and just the need to really wipe the the brush and to not be kind of like with this product where I just kind of brush 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 and I'm done. This one required a little bit more precision but definitely easier than a pomade. So it's up to you as far as whether you think that this type or style of product would be right for you. The price is definitely right for uh, this one from Sephora. I think it's time to talk pencils and when it comes to just straight pencils I only have two which I mean the the ones that you have to sharpen. I have the Brow This Way Fiber Pencil from Rimmel, and I don't see a name for this one. I just see a, a number, I'm not sure, and I don't see it called Universal either, and maybe that's what it is, I'm not sure. Here's a swatch of it right there. It might be considered Universal. Kind of, kind of works with the idea of Universal. And then this one, it, it does not have a spoolie or anything. And then this one is the ash color from the Joe Fresh line. And this one about is about 10 bucks. And I'm not sure that if it, it's ash brown, but it seemed to, to be okay on my brows. This is, this is the color there. I would definitely call the Rimmel one more universal quote unquote color. I like the fact that the cap on each end of this is the same. It is not the case on every product and sometimes I have had issues with that. And I like the fact that it's clear you can tell which one is the spoolie, which one is the pencil. I've had no trouble sharpening the pencil. I have no trouble using the pencil. It's very, very basic. I do think though that it is overpriced for what it is. I do believe it's about $10 Canadian and I think that you should be able to get a pencil like this that is so basic for less. And I think that there are pencils, well, I know there are pencils in the six, seven dollar range that are comparable to this. The Rimmel pencil, not really a whole lot to write home about. I think that if you can get it for super, super cheap, which Rimmel usually is super cheap, I don't think it's a bad pencil, but it's not a pencil that I would go to. And I suspect that as I'm using up my brow products, that one's going to be one of the last ones that I use. I talked brow waxes a little earlier and I want to talk about a couple more. So I talked about two from Joe Fresh and I also talked about the universal uh, 
one that, that I showed you earlier. And when it comes to waxes, I have a couple of different ones from Sephora. Again, they're $6 each. They're a great price. Right now I have two. I have the light and the medium open, but I've also used the dark and they're all really great. So this is the light. A little bit too light for me. I would say it would be great if you have blonde hair. So down here is the light and this is the medium. And the medium is the one that I'll use more on the inner third and then I would use the dark for the tail of my brow. I just don't have one open right now. And you'll notice that these have a cap. It, they don't come with this cap. This is actually the Nude Sticks cap with the sharpener on the end and they work well with that. The cap they usually come uh, with is just this basic cap like this. And I really, really like these caps. One other thing that I would mention is that when you use this pencil up toward the end, there can be a lot of product left that you can't sharpen the pencil anymore. I have scooped up this product and put it in a little container to use with a brush with powder and it works great. So you can use these completely up if you just change the way you're using them. I think you can tell that I'm enthusiastic about brow waxes. Again, this is based on my situation with the brows that I have. If you have little to no brows, it, it probably would not do very much for you. Next up, I would like to talk about brow gels. And I only have a couple if you don't count the comb in brow mascaras that I showed you earlier, the Gimme Brow from Benefit and then the Sephora Brow Builder as well. These are two that I tried. There is the Anastasia Clear Brow Gel that is very well known. This is a mini. I also have the full size. And I have to say, just for convenience, I do end up liking the mini quite a bit. So um, take it for what it's worth as a comment. And this one is the Brow Setting Gel from Morphe. And Morphe, I ended up getting the full set of brow products. It came with a spoolie, it came with this brow setter, a pencil, a pomade, and a brow highlight pencil, which I will get to in a little bit. And what intrigued me about this one, although it dispenses a little bit too much product especially at the beginning if you see it has a short side and a long side the long side is great to help with grooming your longer brow hairs and then the end i end up using the long one for the brows here and i end up using the flat side to tame the tail of my brow and i have found i really like this if i could get this brush with this formula i would be in heaven are they, is this a bad formula? No, I just like this one a little bit better. Although I have to say for brow gels, I like the waxes as well. And you know what? Hairspray or clear mascara works just as well to set brows. So these are not a necessity. You can definitely multitask other products, but if you want just that little extra hold that is made specifically for that purpose. I don't have any issue with either one of them. I do have to say that so far, I really like this brush better and it's a lot cheaper than the Anastasia solution. That said, Anastasia right now has a combo, a full size pencil and a full, nearly full size brow setting gel. Uh, is that exactly what it's called? Clear brow gel. And it's the two together, the two combined are $33. And usually the, just the brow is, is if I'm not mistaken, 27. So to get both for 33 with the brow gel virtually being a full size, I think that's amazing. If you can get that kit still, I would highly recommend it. That is assuming you like to use brow gels and a, a retractable pencil. <laughs> I have to make sure I say that as well, obviously. Right. We only have three categories to go still. We have retractable pencils, we have brow highlighters, and we have pomades. We're getting there. Today I have five pencils to talk about, five different brands. I have the Precisely My Brow from Benefit. I have the Morphe Microbrow. I have the NYX Microbrow. 
the Anastasia Brow Wiz, which is a holy grail for a lot of people, and then also the Sephora Waterproof. I'm going to go drugstore first, actually the least to most expensive. So Morphe is the cheapest. It is cheaper than the NYX Micro Brow. It has a, a nice uh, tip, as you would expect, and a spoolie at the end. What I like as well is that the two ends are the same size, so it doesn't matter which way you go. The only thing is you can't tell which side is which unless you remember which way the, the writing goes. And the other thing, see I opened the wrong side. The other thing that is of import, I think, with the this micro brow from Morphe, which looks like this, is that it it pills when I use it. It, it pills um, quite a bit. But it, I mean, for the price, this is the cheapest one. You use the spoolie and you, you just uh, wipe away the, the little bit of pilling that happens and it, it doesn't keep happening. But I did notice that with this product, it could just be me, I don't know. It That uh, same situation does not happen with the micro brow, which would be the second cheapest. And it looks like this. And I used color taupe and for Morphe, all of them were the color latte, if you're curious. Now for NYX, it has the same thing, spoolie and pencil, but the spoolie side, the cap is shorter. And I call that a, a definite design flaw because if you jam your pencil into the, sh oh, sorry, if you jam your pencil into the shorter end, um, you're going to lose product. And this is not super cheap. So I, that, that kind of annoys me. So anyway, I've got it on the right side now and putting it back. And of course, it really makes me think, and that was the intention, I think, it makes me think very much of the Anastasia Brow Wiz. Um, and it, I really believe it's supposed to be a dupe. Next up in cost, we have the Sephora Waterproof uh, Retractable Brow Pencil, and this one is in Midnight Brown. I forgot to mention, um, oh no, I did. The NYX is in taupe. And this is a reasonable comparison here. It's it's harder to use than the Morphe one. This is the NYX, this is the Morphe. And now the Sephora pencil. Now the, Sof the Sephora pencil was a recommendation from Makeup Struggles who said, you know, we don't talk about this one enough. Here it is. We don't talk about this pencil enough. It is great. It's cheaper than the Brow Wiz. This is 16 Canadian. The Brow Wiz is, I think, 27? 23 or 27. And so it is significantly cheaper. And I kind of like the brush on the end. As opposed to a spoolie, they have this neat... I don't know if you can see it. It can focus. Let's see if it can focus. Yeah, it has this neat rubberized brush at the end, and I, I kind of like it. It's a comb, and I think it's just different from the usual spoolie that we, we get, and spoolies can get really gummed up, and this one is just easier to clean. I don't mind it. I used it a number of times, and I was happy with it, and all of the colors so far are very comparable. So again, the Sephora one was, and it is waterproof, and it is midnight brown, 04. Let's go to the Anastasia Brow Wiz. And this one is the one that I would compare to the Benefit. And I'm trying to see how much product, but it's actually not written. Oh yeah, there we go, 0 0.085. And the Benefit pencil is 0 0.08. So there is more product in the Brow Wiz, despite the fact that the Precisely My Brow, if I'm not mistaken, is actually a bit more money. All right, so I had to put this one in if I was going to compare retractable pencils. And it has exactly like the NYX, it has the two ends, same as the Sephora. Now, the difference with this one compared to the NYX is that the caps are the same size. You cannot make a mistake, which is, in my estimation, great, especially when the product is, is expensive. I mean, Micro pencils are expensive on an ounce per ounce basis, way more expensive than any of the other products. This is the Anastasia color. So they're all very, very comparable. 
color wise if you're trying to figure out what the matches are I think that this is a bit of a guide assuming these are colors that you can use I found this product to be very smooth I found the NYX product to be a little bit tougher so if I were to compare this product to a couple of the other ones that are very very similar I would actually say this one and the Sephora one are very very comparable what apart from price what might seal the deal for you is whether it's a spoolie or that little comb and then if you don't mind that little bit of pilling I would also say that the Morphe option is as creamy as these other two so that's just food for thought now this one is again precisely my brow from Benefit. I do like the 3 and the 3.5. I enjoy the spoolie on this and I also enjoy the pencil. Out of the bunch I would actually say that precisely my brow, the Brow Wiz and Morphe are probably the creamiest. Uh, it's a 412. Really, okay, let's just get real. The NYX is the one that is the least creamy. It is it is hard, it feels like hard tinted wax uh, to me. But when I look at all these colors, the, the only one that is kind of darker is really the Anastasia. The other ones are more of a, a medium or universal, universal brown. So this, this one from Anastasia is darker, but the other ones are pretty much dupes for each other. I like the Precisely My Brow, but I will only buy it if it's on really deep discount. The same one will go for Anastasia. When I look at the other alternatives that are between $7 and $13, actually, no, pardon me, $7 and $16 compared to um, low 20s to 30 dollars I just I would go for a cheaper alternative I did not find a big difference in staying power and I do like the fact that the Sephora brand speaks to the fact that it is waterproof and let's just take a look at amount of product NYX is 0.09 grams the Sephora is 0.08 Morphe is 0.1 so that is the most so far. Anastasia is 0.085 and Benefit is 0.08. So wow, I kind of shaken up by the fact that Morphe is both the cheapest and has the most product for a retractable microbrow pencil. It's at the top of the list now for me. It really is. I, yeah, value and just value. The tiny bit of pilling is, would not be enough to deter me from using Morphe again. And as you saw from the swatches, it's obviously an okay color for me. Oh, you ready for one last category of brow products? And then we get to the brow highlighters. Then we are going to talk pomade. I tried four of them. I tried the Kat Von D, what's it called again, Super Brow, 24 Hour Super Brow, the Anastasia uh, Dip Brow, and then the Cabrow from Benefit, and the Morphe Pomade. What do they call it? Brow Cream. They call it a brow cream. Out of the four, there was only one that I got a full product of, and this is the Morphe Brow Cream, and again, it was the, the color Latte. I really do enjoy these little pots for the brow cream or pomade, whatever you want to call it, because I like the ability to wipe the brush on the side. I don't know if you can see that. And, um, and I used it three times and it really takes, you can see, it takes so little product. And then these, if you have a chance to get samples of the brow pomades, you will have brow product for possibly weeks. So here is 3 and 3.5. As you can tell, I used the 3.5. You can see a bit of a dip in there. 
and I just um, resealed it with with tape when I'm not using it so it doesn't dry out and there's a ton of product in there I mean with 3 and 3.5 if you can go back and forth with them to do your brows or whatever the combination color that you need if you can get a hold of of this kind of a, of a sample like I said you have a couple weeks for sure of, of brow product unless you're very very heavy-handed with pomade type products same goes with the Kat Von D product. Now, of course, you can't use all four colors. Chances are you couldn't use all four colors. Um, but there should be a combination of a couple that makes sense for you. And if you want to get super creative and funky, you also also have the blue. And, and um, of course, for this product, what really differentiates them is the fact that they have colors that are not natural, quote unquote, colors for brows. Um, of course, I'm not a supporter of Kat Von D products, but if you have a chance to get a sample, why not? Why not try it? Which was my opportunity um, personally to do that, and I was curious to understand the difference among the different brands. I was fine with this one. I was fine with the Cabrao, and I was also fine with the Dip Brow Pomade from Anastasia. As a matter of fact, I ended up uh, depotting the sample into a little Sephora sample container, essentially making myself my own little pomade jar. The problem that I had at the beginning where it was twofold in using pomades and I used the Anastasia first. I went with the wrong color. I accidentally used ebony, which was not a good idea. And I, at, I was applying brow pomade like I thought it needed to be applied, which was basically painted on. And then, uh, and it was not a great outcome. Er, luckily, early on in this, so after that first application, and if I can find a picture, because I did a video with, with those Groucho Marx eyebrows, and I will put a picture if I can find it easily for you. I came across Samantha Ravendahl's video showing and I don't know that I could find it necessarily but she made a comment saying brow pomades are great but you need to use a light hand and if you do it's as good as a brow pencil and it lasts all day and won't budge and when she said that I thought oh I'm using too much product and I'm not using it the right way, which is where when I used the the Morphe uh, brow cream, I wiped a lot of the product off on the side of the jar and I also use the back of my hand to wipe off product, excess product to go back and dip and continue to do my brow and it has been revolutionary for me. I'm using the Anastasia brow, dip brow, pardon, pardon me, dip brow pomade today that's what I have in my eyebrows. That's all I used. I didn't supplement with pencils, you know, micro pencils, which I usually have been doing. Uh, the only thing I did was used a brow gel. In this case, I used the, the Morphe brow setting gel. And I think it worked out great. I don't think it's too dark. I don't think it's too weird. I think it looks pretty natural if that's the look you're looking for. And, um, and I will definitely continue to use this little guy and I'm very happy that I have this sample as well and I want to open it for you so you can see what the sample looks like when it has not been depotted and even comes with a brush which I think is really cool. So again if you can get your hands on a sample you may be converted to pomades if you've never used it and I think that spending $20-25 on a pomade when you're not even sure that you like the idea of applying pomades is a is a big gamble. So these little um, sample sets are great to build your ability to use it a few times to get the hang of it in order for you to be to really be able to evaluate both the product and the product category and to decide if it's right for you. Whereas when it's a brow pencil, a brow wax, um, a, a retractable pencil, I don't think that the learning curve is quite as high as a uh, brow pomade. Now, I don't think the learning curve is that big. Half a dozen times and I 
think I have it reasonably figured out, although sure, I'm going to get better over time, but I think I have it reasonably figured out for a person who basically only used retractable or just a straight brow uh, wax pencil for, you know, getting out of the house real quick. So if you are not sure about my recommendation for the brow pomades, I would say hands down the Morphe one right now. Uh, just from a price perspective, it is so much cheaper than the other alternatives. That's what I would suggest. It's less than half the cost of the other alternatives. And the shade range is actually pretty good if you go and take a look. If you're not big on Morphe, I would probably suggest the Cabral. I just, I liked it more. It was, felt more malleable than the other ones and more forgiving. But that's just um, an impression having used it uh, twice and the other pomades at most um, three times each. So consider that recommendation, that last recommendation, more like a first impressions recommendation. I think it would take me months of trying all of them to see if I changed my mind. And so who knows, I can maybe do an update to this video. All right, I am back after a lengthy interruption, but we have one last category, and that is brow highlighters. And so that is the brow bone under your brow, uh, just that little spot that we want to uh, help highlight uh, to bring out our eyes. And I have products from four different brands. I have NYX, I have two from Sephora, one from Morphe and one from Benefit. Let's go through this one from NYX really quickly. We're gonna go again from uh, cheapest to more expensive. I have just a tiny bit left. This is called, this is the Sculpt and Highlight. And so the other end would have been a brow product. It's just I had none left when this project started. Uh, and so this is Brow Contour in, so in uh, Rose and Soft Brown. Is there any other information? No, okay. So here's what it looks like. I have very, very little left, but I will attempt to swatch it. Okay, so I'll swatch all of them and then we can talk about them. It's a, bit, it's a very creamy product. I will then swatch the Highbrow from Benefit right after. Then the Sephora, which is a, so the Benefit is just a single color. It is called Creamy Brow Highlighting Pencil. I think that's all it's called, but highbrow being being the, the name. There doesn't seem to be a shade color. And this one is the first of the two from Sephora. I have trouble with this one. Um, it's a tougher composition and it is the 06 Pearly Opal. And it's not necessarily that all of the Sephora brand are the same consistency because this one, which is the 04 Matte Beige, is very creamy. So I, I don't know why that um, pearly opal is, is so tough. And then finally, the Morphe. And the Morphe is the, it's called Highlighter Stick. And the highlighter, highlighter Stick itself is called uh, O Brow Baby, although that might be the actual color name. Okay, so here we go. So we had NYX. Benefit, Sephora Pearly Opal, this one was Sephora again, and Morphe. And they're all very creamy. They, they, they blend very well. I'm just making sure that that is the case. Yeah, they all blend um, very easily. The only one that is an exception, again, is this Pearly Opal. It's, it just, it's just a stiff formula. Uh, and so, yeah, I would not recommend this one un unless it's just, again, this specific crayon that's kind of tough. It seems to be, yeah, it's, I think it's just, it was a little dry because it seems to be behaving a whole lot better now. Yeah. So it was just a bit dry. And as I got through the pencil, it seems to be, yeah. Okay. Now, what do I think of them? First off, I think you either have, you either like a cool tone, therefore more of a pinky brow highlight, or maybe you like more of a warm tone, beigey light brown highlight that goes with just a lighter version of your skin color. 
That would be my assumption. If that is the case, then out of these three, that are all three more on the cool tone rosy side, my preference would be first off the NYX because it's not quite as pink. It's pink, but it's not quite as pink. Then the Benefit Highbrow. Finally, the Sephora because it's just not as smooth and it also has an iridescence to it that I find a little weird for the brow. So that would be for the cool side. And then for the warm side, I only have two, but um, I would have to say that the Morphe is my preference. Just look at them again. Yeah, the Morphe is my preference because it's a lighter shade, but you have to be using whatever makes more sense for you. So for me, the Morphe is the one that has the, the better look for, for my brow arch. So that's a lot of products. But I've given you my favorite one out of every category, including the brow highlights. I hope I gave you some information to help you determine which one is right for you. And I would love to hear what your favorite products are down below, or if you have any questions on all these products that I went through, I'd be happy to answer some questions. I look forward to hearing some feedback, of course. And I also um, thank you for your time. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. But for now, take care.